guys, Paul McLean here. Welcome to the Monday Morning Wake Up Podcast. And hey, as I say every week, man, I'm excited that you're with us today. Um, I promise you, you this is a this is a podcast today that you're going to want to lean in, grab something to write with, maybe an iPad. Hey, grab your phone, the notes on your phone. But this is going to provide significant value to you. In fact, we got somebody on today, guys. I was looking at these numbers. He went from helping 110 families in a week to 620 families in a week. I mean, think about the, the, the growth of that. That's 6X in, in 12 months. So for you on here, if you're like, man, I got big goals in 2023 and, and you're kind of like maybe unsettled, like, are they too big? Because last year didn't look the way I wanted it to look, or I had some growth, but 6X, wait, today you're going to have somebody that come in last year, they had some big goals and, and, and they accomplished them this year. And we're going to unpack what that looked like. We're going to go through some reflection topics, mechanics, mindset. And so, guys, lean in. The special guest today we've got is Marco Conde. Marco, good to have you on, man. Paul, uh, thank you so much, brother. It's a, it's a privilege to be on with you, man. Well, dude, I'll tell you this much, man. We've had a, a good amount of time where we've been able to kind of connect and, and, you know, spend time together in different states, different meetings, different locations. And, um, you know, it's been really cool watching the growth you've had, man. When you went through – those numbers. In fact, I saw a post you put on Facebook when you gone out there and you had helped. Was it your first like thousand families in a in a month, right? Yeah. And um, I read that post and I was like, dude, I was kind of t- like, I was just so excited for what you're able to do for your family. Um, I was excited about what that number meant for the agents on your team, like Tyler and some of these other people that are coming on board and seeing great success. And so, and and then you blew past that, dude. You've almost doubled it since that post. You know, when you look at your biggest week already, you know, it's, it's pretty insane. So um, really excited to have you on brother. And, and I know that you'll bring significant value to everybody that's leaning in and watching this today. And so really would love to kind of start with talking about the big breakthrough moments. I believe when you have a year like that, a transformational pivotal year like that, there's certain things you can point to and say, man, this was an adjustment. This was a change. And I really want to kind of undress both things of mindset and mechanics. And for everybody on here, I promise you, there's a year like this uh, in front of you. If, if you have the faith and the work that you put behind it, you're going to have a year like this. And I promise you, Marco, there's probably years before this where you you ended pretty frustrated because you're like, what the heck, man? But I promise you, because I've experienced years like this in the last 15 years where, where it's just a pivotal year where where, you, where everything is almost transformed as far as where you can go and, and how far you can go. And so, Marco, unpack it for us, man. What what are some of the big changes that you made this year in, um, in, in mindset and mechanics, dude? Yeah, well, thank you. And once again, uh, super excited to be on with you, brother. I can tell you this, 2022, the success from 2022 started with how we finished 2021. Okay. And I think it's really in, in, important because how you finish a year is how you start the next year. Uh, and obviously now we're in the holiday season um, and it's very easy to kind of let your foot off the gas. But realistically speaking, our those families need you know our help more than ever before. Um, and man, there's no better time to be out there helping families, selling insurance than now. Um, people are thinking about their families a lot more. They are with family a lot more. And it's just that, that natural thought process of, hey, man, um, is this, our, this is a family time of year. And for us, uh, going back into 2022 and reviewing it, it really started in November and December of 2021. Number one, keeping our activity high, but also putting a good game plan. And the game plan really led with telesales. Uh, we were a predominantly face-to-face uh, driven agency, um, but we knew that we had to pivot for a lot of reasons. Number one, uh, our home base office is in South Florida, um, where obviously um, saturation uh, of the market sometimes can impact how readily available face-to-face leads are. Um, and on top of that, we knew that from a coming out of COVID, uh, that telesales was really going to be a, the game changer for us. So, you know, the first three, four months in 2022, um, our business somewhat stalled. In, in and what, what I mean by what I mean by that is because we had to learn how to operate in a different way. Okay, uh, we had to figure out the telesales game. Uh, we had to try live transfers. We had to call, try one call closes. We had to find out what scripts and what rebuttals work. Uh, what lead vendor partnerships work, 
Um, and so for us, the first few months of 2022, um, we had to just honestly transition into uh, a new platform, okay? Because what our goal was to make it everything that we do and every time that everything that we have success in, how can we make it very replicatable and duplicatable all across the country? So when we have new brokers and agency owners start with us from no matter where across the country, they're going to get the same training and the same chance to be very successful with us. So for us, telesales was really that breakthrough. Uh, we had a lot of top producers um, that came out of the field um, and have gone full telesales. Um, and because of that, we've been able to really create a platform that when people do start with us, when new agents and new brokers start with us, uh, we can feel comfortable now giving them the best of both worlds, giving them the best face-to-face -face platform, which we've always had, and now also giving them the best you know, remote sales, right? Um, you know, getting plugged into a local office um, and having that that vibe in the office of individuals booking face to face appointments and obviously doing one call closes and live transfers and follow ups and all that kind of stuff. Um, we, that was our big transition this year. We were very maniacal about, you know, targeting a few key components of the business in 2022 when we ended 2021. Um, and that was one of them. The telesales piece um, was one that was pivotal for us because not only does it give us the ability to get in front of more families and help more families, it also allows us to be able to recruit more agents and brokers as well um, that don't have the time or the, or the schedule or the ability to go uh, and drive around and meet with families and so on and so forth. Um, on top of that, it also has given us the ability to partner with other agencies um, that offer different insurance products and services. Um, and now we have a platform where we can simply integrate it into what they currently do um, and they can add life into their product portfolio um, very seamlessly. So um, that transition and that decision to go all in with telesales um, was a real big one for us. And it's been a key to our success this year, man. I love that, man. So when you when you made the decision well, for one, like what made you think about that? Cause you were, you were having some growth. I mean, you weren't where you wanted to be, but I mean, you weren't helping 40 families a month. You were helping a good amount still. Like what made you pause and say, Hey, this is going to be the main focus. This is going to be the main thing we're going to change. Um, and then also to that point, what took place where you guys decided to say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to step out. And let me ask you, was it mentally difficult to, to get out of your comfort zone and go navigate and pioneer kind of a whole new platform that you weren't using already? Um, and, and then how did you, you know, deal with that and, and get past that? Yeah, it's a, it's a couple great questions. First and foremost, we had a leadership meeting and we, we roll out the game plan for the following year. Um, and we ask, you know, we get feedback. And then from there, we ask for the leadership team to be with us. Um, so with that commitment from the leadership that we, leadership team that we got, um, we all were in it together. You know, we all knew we were going to take some lumps, <laughs> kind of finding out, you know, what worked, what didn't, and so on and so forth. So for us, um, it started with really uh, at the very top, the leadership team buying in and understanding that, hey, if we really want to scale this and make this duplicatable and replicatable and coming out of COVID, uh, which really has created a new, uh, you know, a new norm in, you know, in our country, which is, you know, a lot of the business now is done over the phone. It's done remotely. Um, and so those two, with the combination of us having a, a heavy workforce in different spots in the country, especially in South Florida, where, you know, getting high quality face to face leads uh, consistently um, in both English and Spanish, it became it became tough uh, at certain times. And so for us, we knew that we had to really uh, give our brokers and our agents the opportunity to serve their in the entire country with multiple states and really never have lead flow become an excuse ever again. Uh, and that's what really Telesales has done for us because that, that excuse is gone. Um, you can work the entire country. You can work till three, four in the morning here on the East Coast while you're dialing uh, or you're helping families in California. Uh, there really, uh, there is no excuse. Um, you know, your productivity, truly you own it. Um, and obviously you have access to all different leads, all different states. Yeah. Um, and that's been a turning point for us. I love that, man. And I think that, you know, when, when everybody that's on here, as you're preparing for the new year, it, it's taken that, that, that simple pause and saying, what are the, some of the biggest issues and problems that we had to deal with 
in 2022. And maybe that's somebody on here that's like, it's just simple lead flow. Like they're an agent and, and they have these goals to go out and, and you know, issue pay. They have goals to get that red jacket, man. You know what I mean? Like that red jack behind you, which I love because Marco, that's what you've always exemplified was leadership by example, which is probably why you've got a leadership team working in an independent environment like we have, where it's not a positional thing, but people want to get around and say, hey, let's move forward and let's all beat to the same drum because of what you've done. But maybe there's somebody on here that, that that's the biggest thing you need to do is simply sit back and say, man, my lead strategy was off last year or maybe maybe last year my, my biggest thing was distractions dude i just had very limited intentional blocked out times of focus i was kind of here and there and doing this but doing that and, and and maybe you plug into an office environment and you make a decision to change something but nothing changes until something changes and knowing what to change is going to be found in those pauses that quiet time that reflection where you say this is why we're going to do it because we're solving this problem and this is the payoff that's going to come and then it's easier to get uncomfortable <clears throat> it's easier to take that step of uncomfortability because of that and so I absolutely love that. And, and <clears throat> excuse me, I love how you broke that down, man. Um, when, when it comes to like mindset, was there any kind of big shifts mentally as far as a vision, maybe um, what you believed could be accomplished? Or was there some things that changed in the latter half or maybe the end of the, the 20, you know, 2021 that set you up to really kind of go after this big 2022? Anything mentally that kind of changed you believe? Yeah, for, from a mindset perspective, uh, you know, for for me, it, I'm responsible for always being able uh, to, you know, impact a new agent and a new broker's belief system. And I'm I'm a firm believer that the best way to positively impact someone's belief system um, is their first couple batches of leads when they're <clears throat> calling those clients. Those clients know why they're calling. Um, and that's for us has been always kind of been our, our DNA, right? Because that belief system is so critical when somebody starts with us that no matter what it takes, whether it's us helping with a lead subsidy program, whether it's us, you know, uh, you know, going half and half on an order, whatever it is, we always wanted to give that new agent and that new broker that aha moment when they started with us saying, wow, these people do know why I'm calling. These leads do work. Uh, and the faster we can get that belief system to that point, the more consistency we're going to see from individuals finding their breakthrough. Because I, we've always believed since day one that every agent, and every broker is going to find their breakthrough at some point or another. The question is, will they stay around long enough to see it? And so for us, we're always looking to just, you know, get, inject their belief system, boost it. Um, obviously, um, FFL has given us some phenomenal resources. FFL virtual sales site that was just redone not too long ago as well. It's a plethora of an amazing kind of training camp platform with everything there. So we also rely heavily on that. But for us, man, um, you know, from a mindset perspective, that as an agency owner, that's always been the thing for me, man, is when people start, how can we really positively impact their belief system? And I wanted to get to a point where I didn't have to worry about getting them those high quality leads that we felt comfortable putting in front of them. So that their first couple of dialing sessions, man, they did speak to people who knew why they were calling. They realized that, th that this is real. This does work. Um, and then from there, that's kind of been a big turning point for us. I love that, man. Um, and, I, and I think that a lot of what I always hear when I speak to you, Marco, it's just the heart, man. Like you just, you know, it's about serving people and helping others. And and guys, that that's the probably the single biggest thing. When when I'm, one of my aha moments, Marco, when it came to building a business, was really the connection between personally producing and building the business. Because personal production, I understood it, man. You know, but I, I but I was missing it. You know, I'd go to those, you know, week and week out, like, dude, what is going on? Like, can I find any good individual? Is there anybody left in America that actually wants to go out there? and create something great for their family. That's going to do what they say they're going to do. That's going to work real hard. Like, is it going to sack? Is there anybody, you know? And um, what I realized was at the end of the day, when I got good in the home was when I was able to take off my, my selfish desires just to make a paycheck, right? The ego of what if they say no, and how am I going to feel in this future self? That's not even being, you know, it's not even a real, a real situation yet. And I was able to untie my shoes that have been tied with all those selfishness and ego and pride and, and, and untie those by going in and putting on their shoes and just saying, how can I serve them? 
How can I help them? How can I provide value? And, and I think that's the same thing that translates with building a business. When you have those eyes to see people and realize that, you know, it's, it's easy to forget what it feels like being day one in the business. I know it is for me, man. It's been 15 years. I've got like that curse of knowledge where it's like, oh, you don't know about, you know, return of premium or you don't know about real time leads. Like you don't like, like, what do you mean you don't know? And it's like, well, duh, dude, they just started, man. Like, and, and it's like speaking at their language because they're brand new. Right. And it's like, it'd be like me speaking um, with big words of my, my two, my, my five-year-old, you know what I mean? Like I got to bring it, break it down and speak on their level. And I think that's so important to know if we're going to best serve the agent, we got to sit down and say, Hey, where are they at? What do they need? What's going to make a difference for them? And that aha moment, man, that is really when the belief is truly birthed. As you're saying that I'm thinking about my first appointment that I was kind of like, are they going to buy? Like, do these people actually buy this stuff? Now I'm 19. I don't even know what life insurance truly means yet. I just need to make some money. And and, and that was my, why my biggest aha moment was like the benefit and value of what we provide. And if I could put the client first, it'll all take care of itself. If I could serve them first, I'll be taken care of on the back end. And I remember going to sit with that client and making that first sale. And it feeling so good because like, dude, we, we connected they were nice. It was like the complete opposite of what I kind of, you know, saw in my head initially. And and I remember sitting in my car and almost like overwhelmed with all kinds of different emotions. You know what I mean? Like a feeling of hope, like, man, the future is going to be okay. Because if I could help one family and I knew commonsensically, this is the worst I'm ever going to be, right? I knew that I was going to have a ratio derived, but through intentional practice and experience and skill will be birthed. And like I knew I'd get better. And, and I remember having that, that sense of hope and of, of joy um, and, and just like that breakthrough, like, I believe this is going to work. And so that's such a big deal, Mark, like what you're talking about, I think, for everybody to really kind of hold on to, you know. Um, what I love for you to talk about, dude, is, you know, when, when it comes to the game plan, because you said at the end of the year, we put together this strategy. Um, I do want to also spotlight what you said. Everybody, if you're on here, don't miss what Marco said. Because sometimes you almost want to miss what he said because it means that you got to get uncomfortable. And maybe you've already been leaning on this choice of like the last week I'm just going to kind of kick it, enjoy it. And I think there's times for that if it's planned and if it's earned. Like you said, if I do this, then I'll have this. That's how you build continuity with yourself when it comes to building and establishing a good business. But when you do it just because you feel like doing it, oh, dude, that is dangerous dog because like you're gonna feel like not dialing you're gonna feel like doing all kinds you're gonna feel like not investing so much in leads you're gonna feel like not driving that last appointment you're gonna feel like leaving the office early like dude you're gonna have all kinds of feelings i don't care who you are and so if you can start teaching yourself to not listen to feelings but walk by faith into what you want to see happen that's going to be a pivotal breakthrough as well but there's somebody on here marco that's like they've already kind of got the last week like i'm just gonna i'm gonna go hard in the beginning of the year. It's like the person is like, man, I'm going to lose weight January 1st. It's like, dude, you're going to put on five pounds, dog, if you don't be intentional and start now. So so I think that's such a big deal. So for anybody on here, don't miss what Marco said. Their big breakthrough year started not January 1st. It started in November and December as they started to strategize and then execute on that strategy. So they actually had momentum which is a massive thing. They had momentum going into the new year and they had this confidence that, oh, it's going to be a good year because we've already got out ahead of this. That's a big deal. It's like if you're running a race in 2023, some of you based off 2022, and I know I've been there, I'm running a race and I feel like I'm at my speed and I'm running against, what was that guy's name? Um, Hussein Bolt. You said who was? Like you feel like you're you're racing Hussein Bolt and like how could I possibly win? All right. And I felt like that, depending on what a year looked like and stuff. But if I said you're running a hundred yard dash against Hussein Bolt, but you get to start on the eighty yard line, are you confident now? I mean, dude, you're eighty percent like you could I mean, you gotta still move, but dude, you're eighty yards ahead of him. You know, that's where I want to be able to set myself up where January 1st, I almost have such a high confidence because I know I went the extra mile at the end of the year that, like, I'm running backwards against Hussein Bolt. Like, dude, I got this, man. I got I got it. 
I'm out ahead of it. I got momentum. Let's go. Right. And so I think that's such an important thing. But Marco, talk about like you said you put together this game plan. What kind of reflection do you do? Do you have a, a period of time at the end of the year where you spend some some moments where you just kind of think about and analyze your prior year to take out some things that that year had taught you? Do you highlight some things that worked and kind of, you know, build yourself up and some of the things that were accomplished, even if the whole year wasn't an accomplishment? Like, what do you do, you know, at the end of the year? And do you do anything that kind of helps you reflect to have that better game plan from what insight you gained from the prior year? Yeah. So one thing I, uh, as a leader and as an you know agency owner and small business owner, you, you think about this, right? You think about um, the group of people that are choosing to be in business with you every single day. That's the way I think about it. I think, you know, every single morning we wake up, you know, we, I have to earn the right to be the home where all of these brokers and agents and agency owners hang their license and do business with us every day. OK. Um, and so with that comes daily reflection. But at the end of the year, that gets obviously heightened significantly because that at that point, we really do evaluate the previous year um, and figure out, hey, what, what went wrong? What went right? Um, and really come out with a clear game plan for 2023 um, and not just come out with a game plan just because it's you know what we're supposed to do, but really get feedback from individuals, uh, include the leadership team. And then for 2023, roll it out to the entire agency with a very clear training roadmap with you know a timeline, uh, you know what we're doing, what we're going to do to support, um, you know, this pivot, this shift in the business. Um, and it's super important not just to come up with it, but to communicate it and execute it well. Um, I think coming up with game plans is pretty simple. Um, we all have New Year's resolutions, right? You mentioned. Um, but man, when you have the momentum going into the new year by finishing November and December strong, and then you're able to communicate it um, out with timelines and, and obviously with a very clear plan of action, and then follow through with it because it's a full team buy-in. It's between staff, leadership team, myself. Um, it's awesome to see those things come to light. And keep in mind too, we have failed tremendously in several projects this year. That's just the reality. Um, but even with those failures, we realize that in this business, it just takes a couple victories for the, for the business to boom and for so many lives to be changed um, and for a ton of families to be helped. So not every swing of the bat has to be a home run. We've struck out a lot, but the beauty of this business is when you hit, when you when you hit one, uh, man, it, it can be a home run. It, it's it's a home run. It can be life changing for so many. I love that, man. It's so 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 good. Um, you know, you look at like, you know, when COVID the pandemic happened in in 2020, it was kind of like a na a, a national pause. Like the whole the whole country paused. I mean, you had to, right? And and think about how many industries have been have benefited and have taken something good from what was bad, and it's birthed another level. You know, even like the telesales and the Zoom, that's something that could have been done regardless of COVID or not. It wasn't like new technology. That stuff was already there. It was already being utilized. It was already you know working at home. That stuff was already being there. But because of it, it caused that pause, and for everybody to kind of say, hey how can we position ourselves now to perform and still get great results? What can we do? How can we use this for our benefit to go out there and take it to the next level? And, and that's really what family first life did. And a lot of others, you know, we were able to go out there and in 2020 have the biggest growth year ever in, in, in the company's history. I think probably one of the biggest growth years in the insurance industry's history, as far as what the growth was and how many families we served, and it was because of that. It was because of that pause. And see, you know, we understand that. But then the question is, what is everybody doing on here to, to pause as well? Because an unexamined life is a, is, a, is a life that's not worth living. And so we can get caught up going through the motions. And, and it's like, think about, Marco, some of the agents that we've recruited. And, and they've been in this business for 30, 40 years. And they kind of almost like, you know, you know, when they got that pride, like, oh, I've been doing this 30 years. Dude, Marco, the funny thing is when I was 19, you know, when I started recruiting and building a business, I'd have I'd have literally adult male men, which was very weird. They'd say, dude, I got underwear older than you. You know, I've been doing no, They said I've been doing this longer than you've been alive and this stupid stuff like that. And I'm thinking like, well, dude, like 
why do you suck so bad? You know what I mean? Like, like I've been doing this one year and my results are better than yours. But the reality is they, they had copied the same year 19 times. It was the same as year one. Why? They, they didn't heighten, they didn't, they didn't reflect and ask themselves hard questions to heighten awareness. And then with the heightened awareness, decide to make different choices within their daily routine that ended up making up their entire year. And, and they just keep repeating itself. And so I think it's so important um, for everybody to do what Marco said, which was take that little, that time and ask yourself, what went right? What went wrong? You know, what were some accomplishments? You know, where, did I spend time with, you know, with people that helped me? Did I spend what, what, what time expert enters with different people that actually hurt me and really analyze what it looked like. And then you can say, okay, going into this next year, how do I prioritize around these different things to make sure that it's going to be better because it won't just be better by default. It only gets better by intention. And, and I think that's such a, a, an important point that you're making, Marco, is to have that time to be able to sit back and actually do that, right? Um, I remember I put together this this acronym, I think it was like two years ago, and, and it was reflect, awareness, and move. And it was just like, how can you ram the year? And it just got me, you know, thinking about like those specific things. So it kind of, you know, went on my, it got into my memory if I did it that way. But, but it was reflect to heighten awareness, right? And then once you've heightened your awareness, it's now your choice to move, to, to actually do something with it. And um, I do, I was getting my hair cut. This is probably about a year and a half ago. And the dude, the dude, like he hit the button where it drops the chair, right? And and I felt like my love handles for the first time. I'm like, like what was that, dude? Like I just jiggled on the way down, man. And and see that that helped me become aware of like, dude, I need to put together some new some new things. So the awareness was there, but then I had to go do something about it. You know what I mean? And so, but the first step is everybody on here. What are you doing to reflect the heightened awareness so that way you can move? Because I'm telling you guys, I've fallen into many months where it's like I get to the end of the month or end of the day. The worst thing is getting to the end of the year. And looking up and saying like, man, how did I get here, right? How did, how did, how did I end up right here? And I've been there and, and, it's, and it sucks. But the good news is today's a new day to change that. And I think that's such a big thing. You know, Marco, um, anything else when it comes to some of these big breakthrough moments that have taken place as you reflect and as you plan um, and, and you've made 2022, man, just such, such a great year, such an insp- inspirational year for everybody. Like I loved looking at, your results and what you've done because it inspired me, man. I mean, I'm like, dude, look at what, what the growth that they've got. Um, so kind of talk about anything else that's related to some of those things that you think really led to that growth. Yeah. A, a great question. I would say relationship building is important as well. I think uh, really getting to, uh, to know your business and know your, the people in your business. Um, and, and also uh, creating a structure that we've, all, we've always been really good with creating structure. Um, whether it's office hours, whether it's dial time, whether it's, you know, face-to-face time, you know, whatever that may be. Um, what's helped us this year is really creating a very clear structure um, and playing to everybody's strengths. You know, uh, the beautiful thing is that when you work with a good leadership team or you have some part, big, good business partners to work with, um, what you quickly realize, as long as ego is removed from the business, uh, that everybody has strengths. <clears throat> and if we can play to them, um, Man, it's uh, it's been great. Uh, so for us, we you know we figured out, hey, who was the best at mortgage protection? Who's been the best at final expense? Who's been the the best at telesales in Spanish and in English? And you know who's the, been the best at live transfers? And we take that and we build off of it, um, and it really empowers people as well. Um, yeah. As much as we're an independent business and every, all these individuals are independent brokers, there's something about team camaraderie. Uh, and there's something regard about you know working collectively as a group for a better good um, for everybody for the entire agency um, that it's, excites people. So um, for us, it's just continuing to to build relationships. We're very big on warm market recruiting. Um, you know, we love changing lives. Is is it becomes addicting? Um, and and w- what better life to change than someone you know? <laughs> Whether it's, Absolutely. you know, the majority of our agency, uh, Paul, this is a fun fact, but 46% of our agency comes from wireless, comes from telecom, uh, comes exactly where I came from. So in January 2020, when I started um, with no experience, not knowing anybody in the industry, um, finding my breakthrough and then sharing that breakthrough with 
all of my previous coworkers. Um, now you have Tyler Adams, Joseph Gonzalez, Carl Henry, Eric Bosworth. You have, uh, I can go on and on. I mean, these are massive, you know, agencies that are growing so fast um, and they all came over from telecom. Uh, so it just goes to show you, doesn't matter where people are at in their life, uh, man, be vigilant about sharing this opportunity. That's been so great to us. I love that, man. I think that everybody on here, you've got a different strength, right? And, and gift set um, that when it comes to recruiting that you can play off of, you know, and if you've been in, like you said, telecom or you, you know that like now you've got a story that's going to relate and connect. And the first step is to relate to navigate so you can relate to them and navigate the, you know, where, where you're, you're trying to take them, which is family first life and opportunity that can bless them. But everybody on here, you might have something different, you know, like if you've got a military background, maybe there's somebody that, you know, different things you can plug into in your community or what have you, where you can get in front of different people with your background that have been in the military and you can have a conversation with them about family first life. So you don't have to have this crazy sales background or whatever, but what you do have is enough if you use it, right? If it's car sales, man, talk to different people in that industry about car sales. Talk about Andy Elliott and what he's doing. There's all kinds of different people that, that you can help you know, given what you've come through and what you've been through and where you worked at. Right. And so I, I absolutely love that last point, man. I think that was, that's a big point. I think everybody on here can start comparing themselves and think like, like I gotta be, um, you know, like Nina, I gotta be all over Instagram and stuff like that. Well, maybe if you don't even have a page, that's probably not the best spot to start recruiting. Right. If, or if it's not very good, but what do you have? Who can you reach out to? Who can you network with? How can you get connected? And, and, and the thing is this, if you can become an evangelist about family first life and you will be when you really understand what difference it makes, like Marco understands it because you saw success, i.e. what's behind you in that jacket. But then when you get that other red jacket this year, right, because you've now become a Hall of Fame agency owner, that's a jacket that holds significance, because that jacket exemplifies the amount of people that you've helped and served that are now out there seeing success directly because of your connection, reaching out and the support structure that you've provided. And so it's a beautiful thing, man. I don't, I don't know if there's anything else we could be doing that's any better than, than what we're doing. And so uh, let's go talk about it, man. Um, a couple of rapid fire questions that I'm going to hit you with real quick and then we'll wrap up, man. Um, what's your favorite music artist or music band? Music artist, yeah. I would say uh, for me, it's Willie Chirino, which is a, a Cuban uh, musician. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm from Miami. I'm Cuban. So I grew up listening to Willie Chirino uh, and, okay. and Mark Anthony. Those are my two best. Hey, Casey, we got to get, get Willie up in the office. We got to listen to some of that. And hey, we're putting him on today. All right. What about um, what do you what do you do? <laughs> Let me here we go. This one right here. Um, what's the most essential characteristic that you look for when it comes to recruiting or hiring somebody? Yeah, uh, attitude and humility, uh, which okay. go hand in hand. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like that. What's your favorite movie? Uh, Rocky, all Rockies, Rocky Four specifically. Okay. What about favorite Netflix series? Ooh, man, um, we just finished one. I like uh, Narco or um, Marco. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, the original or the one, the Mexican one. The original, Mexico. original. The original is better. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What about favorite place to travel? Man, I love going to Orlando. I know it's, it's close by to us, but with four kids, uh, just to see them light up, can't beat it. You should have a couple more kids, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up with you, man. I don't know why you stop, bro. It's weird. I mean, <laughs> think about you're raising world changers, bro. Like the way you, you structure everything and, and the values you could provide, dude. Like, I mean, bless the world by having more kids. Um, what about favorite quote? Oh, man, uh, that one right here, I would say Rocky, right? It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can hit, can, can get hit and get up and keep moving forward. So for sure. I love it, man. Yeah, it's how you respond to it. That's great, dude. Well, dude, hey, man, this has been so good, Marco. I appreciate you. I, I've, I've loved this every minute of it. Um, guys, I know you have too. So so share this. You know, If you want to be a, an impact player for somebody else, man, just simply sharing this can make a massive difference on their week and also on their year. I mean, this is a lot of talk about how to really – Go after 2023 and, and get what you want from it, right? Because it takes intention, it takes awareness, and it takes massive action. And so subscribe, like, comment below. Um, we've got comments that are going to be in drawings right now that Casey's going to pull out, and they're going to have some lead credit that's going to be 
passed out to make sure that this week is, in fact, better than last week. So, Marco, again, thank you so much, brother. Paul, thank you for having me on, man. Merry Christmas, brother. Yeah, you too, my man. All right, guys. Hey, be strong, stay steadfast, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. What's going on, everybody? You know what time it is. We're giving away leads to eight people this week. If you commented on last week's video, episode number 100, you found out that if you commented on that week, that video, you had eight chances to win 250 bucks worth of leads and an Integrity Marketing Group hat. So comment, I hope you commented on last week's video, but that's the, this is the only time we're giving away eight people, we're giving eight people 250 bucks worth of leads and a hat. That's pretty dope. We're not doing that again, but you can still win 250 bucks in leads and you only have four chances this time. So comment on this video right now. Comment right now. Before you do anything else, leave a comment right down below so you can win 250 bucks worth of lead credit. Without further ado, let's see who our eight winners are. Winner number one is Christina Ventura, the perfect podcast to listen to before every dial sesh. Winner number two is Paul Chrysler, awesome guest for the 100th episode. I will definitely be applying this knowledge immediately on the phone. Our third winner is Cody Kreiser, double the value on this one. Our fourth winner is Noel Chacon, awesome work. Thank you for this great training. Happy holidays, everyone. Our fifth winner is Israel Moreno, great video. Our sixth winner is Alex Siebert, great tips here. Will you guys end up posting the script objection handling workbook that was mentioned in the podcast? Yes, we will. Our seventh winner is Angela C. Such great info. Congrats on the 100th episode. You guys are awesome. And our eighth and final winner is... Jonathan Alvarez, this is one of the best videos ever. Awesome content and wisdom. Guys, we're so glad that you enjoyed the 100th episode. Leave a comment every single week and you could win 250 bucks in lead credit to help some families and to help your family. So leave a comment, keep watching, take care, make it a big week, and we'll see you next time.